I suppose that's good enough for an intro. I don't really know what I was going for right there. Anyway, so, hello YouTube, my name is Zach, and this is the first installment, the first episode of Jazz for the Rest of Us, the series in which I will tell the world how they can take jazz-ish concepts, uh, stuff that is typically associated with jazz music, and use it in other kinds of music, like rock and blues and funk and soul and R&B and all that good stuff. This video series does have an intro video, so if you haven't watched that yet, you should go watch that immediately. Now. I'm not sure why now. I'm not sure why the haste is necessary. It just, it just felt right to say that. Anywho, um, I'm going to be assuming, as I explain these things, I'm going to be assuming that you have all watched all six episodes of my incredibly boring introduction to music theory series. So if there's some stuff that I'm saying, stuff that's coming out of my mouth that you, have, you just don't understand at all, it's probably because you haven't watched that. So you should go watch those videos and then come back and pick up where you left off. So today's topic is what I'm going to be calling extended chords. And when I say extended chords, well, first of all, here's a little side note. Music terminology is super slippery, super... In I think I just messed up my EQ. I'm pretty sure I did. Music terminology is super, super inconsistent, super slippery. And people say one thing and they mean another. Uh, there's like five different names for one thing and there's like no names for another thing. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So when I'm saying extended chords, you're not going to... I don't want you to like take that word and just like burn it into your memory and be like, Zach said this is extended chords, so that's the only way that I can refer to this ever in my life ever. That's not what I'm going for. Listen, I'm going to explain a concept... And I just want you to understand the concept. Don't look at, like, the word, the phrase. Look, at the, I want you to understand what the crap I'm talking about. Because in music, that's the point. You have to understand what the crap people are talking about. Um, because the terminology is just really slippery. End of side note. So today's topic is going to be extended chords. So I'm just going to jump right in and try to get you to understand what the crap I'm talking about. So here we go. Let's say that we are in the key of C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's going to be our major scale. We know that we can start on any note and go up a third and then up a third, and that will give us a chord. It'll either be a minor chord or a major chord. There's one diminished that we can get out of there. The seven's a diminished. But you all, you all know this because you watched the other series, and you, I'm, I'm, I'm insulting your intelligence by even telling you this. It's, I, I, I'm, I, you should be offended. Um, anyway, so let's. if we start on the one... You can go up a third, that'll take you to the three. So now you have the one and the three in, in, in the key of C, that's C and E. Then you can go up to the five from the third. So you go up from the third to the five, that's another third interval. So now we have the one, the three, and the, uh, I'm sorry, the first, the third, and the fifth. The root, the third, and the fifth. Uh, the C, the E, and the G. And that gives us a major chord. Everybody knows the C, E, and G is a major chord. Work. But you can keep going from that fifth up to the five, six, seven of the scale, the seventh of, is it, uh, is it the seven or the seventh? One's the seven, one's the seventh, I don't give a crap. You're just going to keep going. We have a C, E, G, and B. That gives us what? A C major seventh chord. We already know this, but this is where the fun starts, my friends, because you don't have to stop at seven. You can go up another third from the seven. You can extend the chord, hence extended chords, right? So if you're on the seven and you go up another third, seven, eight, nine, that gives you a nine. Another side note. If we're in the key of C, we're going to be going from the 7 to the 9. That would be from the B to the D. But we know that D is also the second degree of the scale. So why are we calling it the 9 instead of the 2? Well, because we arrived at it by stacking thirds, we arrive at it after the 7. Thus, we call it the 9. And that makes a lot of sense. You will see some people refer to it as the 2. You'll see people write like C2 or something like that. Usually, this I guess this is a bold statement. I don't know. Usually people that know what they're talking about call it a 9. Not a two, unless they have a good reason to call it a two. But either way, like I said, music terminology is really inconsistent. You just have to know what people are talking about. End of side note number two. So if you play a C and an E and a G and a B and a D at the same time, you can call that a C major nine chord or a C major seven nine or a me C major seven major nine or a C major seven add nine in a partridge in a pear tree. I don't freaking care what you call it. It doesn't matter. You need to understand the concept. So if you play those notes at the same time, it should sound something like this. I'm not playing them in that order because it's really hard to do on guitar. It would be easier to do this on piano. Um, but the, the order I'm playing them in is C, G, B, D, E. It's a pretty chord. 
So let's take another chord. Let's say that we start on the D rather than the C. You're going to have the root, the third, and the fifth. You know that's going to be the D, the F, and the A. I'm not explaining that because you already know it. And then you can take the seven, which is going to be the C. So your normal minor seventh chord, starting on the D, is going to be D, F, A, C, right? That sounds something like this. And I think my guitar is out of tune. I don't freaking care. So um, you can go from that 7 up to the 9. What would that be? Well, the 7 was a C. You go up from C, 7, 8, 9. That's C, D, E. So the 9, if you're starting on the D, is going to be a, uh, what is that going to be? E. So if you play the notes D, F, A, C, E, you get a D minor 9 or whatever the crap you want to call it. doesn't matter what you call it. I don't care what you call it. No one cares what you call it. Um, and that would sound something like, oh, I don't know. Uh, what would that sound like? How about this? And right here, the notes I'm playing are D, F, um, what is that? C, E, A. So it's one, three, seven, nine, five. So let's stick with the D for this next example. We've gone one, three, five, seven, nine, but my friends, the fun doesn't stop there. You can keep going. So we're going to go from 9 up another third. So 9, 10, 11. We're going to add the 11th uh, note, however you want to say it. The 11th, I believe, is the best way to say it. So the 9 was E. We're going to go up a third. That's E, F, G. We're going to add in a G to our chord. I'm playing a guitar right now, and sometimes chords like that get really either impossible or freakishly difficult. Um, so I'm actually going to take out a note. Side note number three. So if you need to take out a note to make room for another note, which is what I'm about to do. What note should you take out? It's a wonderful question. Most jazz players would say you should take out the five. Why should you take out the five? Because think about it. When you play a one in a five chord, what do you get? It's the power chord. The all-powerful power chord of power. That's, it's very sterile, the one in the five. That's your rock chord. That's your da -da 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 -da, right? You can take that out and get rid of that kind of power chordy, harsh, sterile, not very pretty thing. And at the same time, the third of the chord is what determines whether it's major or minor. So you want to keep that. The seventh of the chord determines whether it's a dominant seven or a major seven. You got to keep that. The fifth stays the same regardless. So if you take it out, it doesn't affect the kind of chord that it is. So typically, if you remove a note to make room for another note, you want to take out the five, the fifth. Uh, of that chord. Okay, end of side note. Was that three? I think that was three. So I'm going to play a D and an F and a C, uh, no A and a C and an E and a G. D, F, C, E, G. And that would sound something like this. I'm still out of tune. But that's okay. I'm close enough. I'm not close enough. Okay, that's better. I'm, I'm still a little out, but I think that's a little better. So, um, that was a one, seven, oh, no, that wasn't. One, three, seven, nine, eleven. Okay? So, that is your major, not major, D minor 11, or D minor 9, 11, or D minor 7, 9, 11, or D minor, it doesn't matter what you call it. That's the concept, is you keep going. And we'll keep with our D example, and we'll actually keep going from the 11 to the 1, 2, 3, 11, 12, 13. We'll go from the 11 up another third to the 13. What does that give us? Well, we were at G, and that was the 11, so we're going to go up 11, 12, 13. That's going to be G, A, B. So the 13 is going to be B, so we need to figure out a way to get a B in this chord. And we can do that like this. This is D, C, F, B, E. So that's 1, 7, 3, uh, what is that? 13, 9. I dropped the 11. Couldn't really make room for it. I'm sure I could if I had thought about it, but I just that was the first thing that came to mind. This is what you do to get really cool chords. And you can do the same thing with a dominant chord. We've done it with the one major. We've done it with the two minor. You could also do it with the five dominant chord. So we're still in the key of C. Our five chord's going to be G. Our notes are going to be G, B, D. If you want the seven, that's going to be F. And you can go from F, the seven, up to the nine. So seven, eight, nine, F, G, A. So if you throw an A onto a uh, dominant chord, you get a you could what you could call a G, 
dominant nine or something like that. I don't know what you'd call it. What would you call it? G9. Yeah, you would just call it G9. With this, I took the normal dominant chord that everybody knows and just put, took my pinky and threw an A on top of it in place of the second uh, root note because the root note occurs twice. And this is how it works. You just keep stacking thirds and you come up with really cool chords. This is not actually a concept that is only a jazz concept. It's just a musical theory concept, but it allows you to get those really cool chords that when people hear it, they're like, jazz, you know. So how do you use this in your non-jazz music? Well, you just start throwing really cool chords in your music. And that's just how this works. So let's say we're playing some blues. And we're in the key of E because we're guitarists. And that's the only key that we play the blues in. So we are just jamming. Instead of just doing an E dominant chord, we could do an E dominant. We could do an E9. We could do an E dominant chord with a nine on top of it. Or we could take my, I could take my pinky right here and throw it on this C sharp. That would give me a 13. I would have an E th dominant 7, 13, something like that. I don't, I don't know what you call it. And that would give you some more color. On this A, instead of just doing an A dominant chord, I could throw in this F sharp right here. That's a 13. Uh, what else could I do? I could throw in this B right here. That would give me a nine. So I'd have an A with a an A dominant chord with a nine and a thirteen on it. And that would sound really cool. So we're playing the blues. Here's my chord: nine, thirteen. Here's a nine and a, a thirteen as well. That's how you do it. So say we're doing some like groovy, like, major key stuff. I'm playing a G and a D, or a D and a G, in that order. They're both major chords, so you could do some really pretty stuff on that. Instead of playing these really boring chords, I don't know, instead of a D, you could play a D major 9. Or a D major with a 9 and a 13. Or maybe like this D9, this D7, this D major 9, but the 9 is super low on the chord, so it has a really interesting character to it. On this G, you could play a G major seven. You could play a G major seven with a nine on it, or what is this? That's a third. That's a that's a thirteen. And this is a nine. So instead of this, you can get this. So that is the idea. You just take your chords and you just keep stacking. You keep extending the chords and getting new notes. Side note number th um, four, probably four. Some of the chords that you can create by stacking thirds within a major scale actually don't sound very good, to my ears at least. Um, but I'm not going to tell you which ones those are because I don't want to say these are good and these are bad and give you these rules that you have to follow and say this is allowed and this isn't allowed. That's not what I'm about. I want all of you to experiment and to try com different combinations of notes and try adding this note and this note and this note and then if it doesn't sound good, try taking one out and see which notes don't sound good. I want you all to experiment and come to your own conclusions about these cool chords. So thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was informational. I hope that it was helpful. If you liked the video, then I think you should like the video, if you know what I'm saying, and comment and subscribe and all that good stuff. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments. You can send me a direct message. You can ask me on Facebook. You can ask me on Instagram. I wouldn't suggest Instagram because I haven't figured out how to use it yet. So that might be a minor inconvenience. But the others are fair game. You should all be on the lookout for my next video, which will be on altered chords, not extended chords. And until then, keep jamming.